In this video we're going to discuss a couple source receiver layouts. Uh, th this is referred to as an off-end source receiver layout. We have the source on one end. We have a series of geophones. and In this case just uh, six are shown. You could have 12 or 24. I've worked with data where we've had a thousand 24 channels uh, strung out along the surface. Uh, I've also worked with data where the whole field has been covered with geophones and they've all been turned on at the same time during uh, uh, as the uh, a source is, is uh, activated. So that you get recordings on all receivers in the field. So th this becomes a major sorting problem. So we're going to start just by defining some simple layouts, the uh, off-end source receiver layout. And remember to help you conceptualize what it is that we're seeing, we can draw this image point. We can draw in all of these image arrays, which remember the benefit of the image arrays is that they easily locate the position of the reflection point. So we can then draw in the reflection points so that these are the reflection ray paths that we have to each receiver out along the uh, out along the surface. And these are the reflection points again. And you'll notice that the reflection points cover a distance in the subsurface, x over 2, where x is the distance from the source to the end receiver. So we're really only getting reflection point coverage over half the uh, half the spread length. Now we can take the source and pop it over, take this geophone, move it out to the end, and we can roll along. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we talk about common uh, midpoint data, common midpoint stacking and, and sorting uh, and so on, but for now we uh, can see where the acquisition uh, of this kind of a data set would be relatively simple where we could just move the source uh, uh, equal to a, d a distance equal to the spacing between receivers and then move one of the receivers over and just kind of continue along or roll along. And here we have what's referred to as a split spread arrangement. We've got the receivers on both ends on either side of the source and uh, thus, thus the name split spread. We locate our image source again, we locate the uh, image arrays, and uh, we then visualize the ray paths to each of these reflection points. Um, likewise, you can see that um, we are getting a limited range of depth point, uh, reflection point coverage in, in this case, which would be equal to x over 2 on either side of the image point, or actual reflection point distribution here. So here we're just looking at the time distance response for the off-end uh, source receiver arrangement. We've looked at this before. So this is, this is nothing new. We have a direct arrival array which travels out uh, along the surface. So that gives us this direct arrival which is linear and has a slope which is equal to the reciprocal of the velocity in this medium, V1. And then we also get a critical refraction from the base of the layer that has a velocity V2, assuming the V2 is greater than V1. Uh, it has a uh, slope which is equal to 1 over V2 which makes the slope of the critical refraction less than the slope of the direct arrival. We also know that the reflection event is asymptotic at large x to the direct arrival. So we have these, these basic relationships that I think you'll remember from before. And down here we have the split spread and you can see direct arrivals going out uh, to both ends of the receiver array in both directions. We have critical refractions likewise on to both sides of the source. And uh, the hyperbola 
is, uh, extends into the negative x range and the positive x range. And it's symmetrical about the origin in this case because the layer is flat, it's not dipping. So these are basic relationships that we've discussed previously. And so when we're doing continuous midpoint profiling, we might set up our split spread like this. We've got our source with the receivers to either side of the source. We've got uh, these reflection points in the subsurface. We take the source, we plop it over here, uh, just move it over to the end of the receiver array, take this set of uh, receivers, and uh, move them over here, and uh, continue on. So moving on to the next uh, source, we often refer to this as a roll along, split spread type acquisition approach. It gives, it gives us roughly continuous um, midpoint coverage. You can see here in this case that the midpoint coverage spans a distance equal to 2x, uh, including this uh, set of reflection points out here, uh, while the receiver coverage spans a distance of x. So in general, the span of the midpoint um, will be equal to the receiver span minus half the uh, spread length. So, so the uh, total total span of the receivers, depending on how far out in this direction we go or in this direction we came from, uh, we'd have that uh, total length and we'd subtract from that. Our midpoint coverage would be that total length minus uh, half the spread length. So here we're looking at uh, the, we just have two split spread uh, uh, source receiver combinations with this set of midpoints that we're looking at here. We can see that when we plot these up in where x is the receiver location that we have an overlap in the reflection hyperbola. So we've got receivers in the two split spreads and that distance of 5,250 meters across the, across the surface. Now if we look at the midpoint um, location in this case, we have continuous uh, midpoint profiling uh, over a shorter distance and almost continuous uh, reflection point profiling. And we eliminate the overlap in the reflection hyperbola. So we're more interested in a midpoint or a depth point uh, or a re reflection point location rather than in, in this uh, surface location representation. So I think you can see that we have a problem. The problem that we do have is that we know in this particular case, because we've modeled it, that we have a flat layer in the subsurface. And, and we aren't really seeing geology here. Um, you know, the geologist is going to have a difficult time kind of interpreting the geology from these reflection hyperbola. So what we'd like to be able to do is to remove this delta t to correct the uh, hyperbolic uh, move out here uh, to eliminate it so that we get all the events coming in at the same time or the T0 which is 2H over V in this particular case. This is, this is what we'd expect to see as geologists. If we were looking at uh, an image, we'd want to see a flat reflector. We'd want to see the same uh, two-way travel time at each point along the surface. So again, we know we have this flat reflector. We'd like to be able to eliminate this move out in order to obtain something that the geologist uh, can interpret. So correcting the reflection move out, uh, this is our move out. This is what we refer to as our move out. This is the difference in the from the T0 time of the flat reflector in our model. So as we go to different points out along the surface or different reflection point distances, this uh, delta t that we have in here is referred to as the move out. If we come back to the reflection time distance relationship, we have t sub r is equal to t0, that's this time, plus delta t, which is the move out. And so t sub x uh, or t sub r is just equal to t0 plus delta t, the move out. And that's equal to what should be a familiar looking relationship to you by now. This is the uh, 
uh, reflection time distance relationship is a function of x, and uh, source receiver distance, and uh, the thickness of the layer, and the velocities. So if we square this, if we have t0 plus delta t squared, we square this side here, we get x squared over v squared, and we're just, remember this is 2h over v squared, so this is t0 squared. We take the square of this quantity here, we get t0 squared plus 2t0 delta t plus delta t squared. That's equal to x squared over v squared plus t0 squared. Obviously we're going to eliminate these. And very often what we, the assumption that's made in a lot of texts is that this delta t squared is so small that we can just go ahead and ignore it. Now we're going to take a little closer look at that idea. But for now, that's the typical uh, thinking on the process. So we have 2t0 delta t is approximately equal to x squared over v squared, giving us the move out delta t approximately equal to x squared over 2t0 v squared. Maybe this delta t here, which is what we're interested in, we'd like to be able to subtract that from the actual hyperbolic uh, arrival times in order to flatten out this uh, reflection event. So this delta t, it's referred to as the move out. We'd like to remove it or correct for it. And this correction is uh, often referred to simply as the normal move out correction. And the next time we're going to see that this correction, the assumption that delta t squared is relatively small, actually turns out to be a pretty, pretty, poor, uh, pretty poor, poor assumption. And we'll spend some time discussing move out and how to uh, undertake it in the x squared t squared domain. Uh, we'll, we'll also look at um, a Taylor series expansion of, uh, of the uh, uh, reflection move out and see if we can't do a little bit better job and we'll find that because delta t squared is really not so small that that doesn't work. What we end up having to do is do this uh, go into the x squared t squared domain. So uh, thanks for, for joining us and we'll uh, uh, see you next time.